Yeah, right? Yes. Deal? Boing. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. There's a module for that? There, of course there is. Tom Feister and I are at Drupal South in Melbourne, and uh, Tom is an Italian native German speaker from Südtirol, or yeah, know. as yeah. we say yes. in, uh, in, in Italy, from Alto Adige. Yes. And uh, yeah, so fun fact, there are native German speakers in Italy, and uh, we've been speaking German most of the time, but we're switching to English for <laughs> all of you people out there. How's your Drupal South been so far? Oh, very interesting, yeah. Very good um, two days of uh, presentations and to do uh, today a great code spring. How many Drupal community events do you make it to? Um, once a year, actually, mostly to Singapore, and this is actually the first time in Australia. Right, and that's kind of fascinating. We're going to get to why that is in a minute. Mm -hmm. But um, how long have you been doing Drupal? Um, since 2008. What's, how did you discover it? Um, actually, I was doing a website for an NGO. Uh, together with CVCRM. So basically at that time I was uh, evaluating different CMS and then I, because CVCRM was available for Joomla and Drupal at that time. And yeah, that's how I came into Drupal. What made you choose Drupal in 2008? And what uh, version was that? And that was six, Drupal six. Um, I didn't know Drupal at all at that time, but I have been working with Joomla for a while and didn't want to touch it anymore. <laughs> so that was the main reason. <laughs> and why are you still using Drupal today? Um, yeah, because it's just like I've been working with many CMS, like Type of 3 and so on. Probably most of the Germans know about it and North European. And it just scares the hell out of me. So Drupal is, I really like working with Drupal. It's very flexible. And, um, I need to work a lot with multilingual. So I'm looking a lot forward for Drupal 8. Okay, that, that is definitely one of, that was, was going to be definitely one of my questions. So multilingual, excite, what else excites you about Drupal 8? Um, yeah, different things, uh, especially also um, overriding code and so on is going to be easier. We don't need to hack core that often. And, well, I mean, we, we don't hack core at all, yeah. but we could sometimes. <laughs> well, the, 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 the loosely coupled nature of D8 core will let us turn things off that we don't need exactly. without or breaking over, everything else. Or overriding stuff without breaking anything. Yeah. yeah. So can you compare Drupal 6 to Drupal now? Um, yeah, it was a bit painful compared to what Drupal is doing now, especially building multilingual sites. So there was a big step done in Drupal 7 and yeah, like everything got easier and a little bit less uh, winding around, you need to adapt a little bit less to the Drupal way of doing things than in Drupal 6, for example. But it was really difficult for me initially to get started with Drupal 6, especially because I was working with other CMS, which were doing things very in a very different way. Um, I think that's now a little bit easier to get started with Drupal. Yeah. Do you have a favorite Drupal module? Um, yeah, we use probably. Okay, yeah. but starting in Drupal 8, it's not a you know, it's not going to be a country module anymore. Yeah. Um, what could be my favorite model in Drupal 8? I'm not sure yet, actually. Okay. Uh, because translation and so on should be everything in core now. So I'll, I'm going to let. Have you tried the surprising. multilingual features in Drupal 8 yet? Um, yeah, today, actually. It was the first time. Actually, the first time that I tried Drupal 8 myself. So far, I only watched people trying it in conferences or whatever. Uh, so today was the first time, and um, I tested. The, the the translation features and I found a bug and reported it. <laughs> cool. So instead of reducing the bugs, I was actually creating one more. I hope that's okay. <laughs> but how did you feel about the, the how it's been put together? Otherwise, no, it's it's very very cool. Like interface wise and so on, it makes much more sense than in Drupal Seven now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are um, a couple of multilingual Drupal Eight sites already live mm -hmm. on the web, and and everyone. Uh, with whom I've spoken about that piece of the Drupal 8 functionality is very, very excited. Yeah, so far, like, when I've tested it now, it looks very, very promising, yeah. So, 
What's something really cool that you've built or, or, or done with Drupal? Um, yeah, we have been building some quite complex sites, uh, also in Europe, like a community publishing portal in German and Italian. Um, we did also quite some stuff in, in Burma um, for UN and so on, uh, document management system and so on. So th this kind of this now we're sort of full circle in the couple of minutes that we've been talking. I met Tom for the first time a couple of days ago, and we're in Australia right now. And I don't even remember if we were speaking English or German, but it, at some point... We started speaking in German because in your presentation you were, you were looking for the, the, the translation of Romance. Ah, oh yes, exactly. Okay, yeah, perfect. And, <laughs> and um, I asked you where you lived and I couldn't tell if you had said perhaps Boomer, which might be a place in Australia, I don't know. <laughs> it turns out he was saying Burma. So you live in Myanmar. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Which is probably why you don't get to too many Drupal camps. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> and how long have you been there? And, and how did you end up in... How did you, it's an unusual destination for an Italian, right? Yeah, it is, yeah. <laughs> um, I have been living there now permanently since... For a bit more than two and a half years. Um, before I have been working on the Thai Burmese border for three and a half years, uh, but that was not so much Drupal related. Um, at that time I was volunteering for an NGO there. Mm. What, what were you doing? Um, well, a lot of different stuff. Uh, among the stuff of CVCRM and the website, I did a lot of field work and yeah, driving, delivering goods to a refugee camp or IDP or to the schools in the migrant areas. So you're moving there, I guess coincided with the opening up of the country to some degree. Exactly, yeah. Mm -hmm. And now you have a Drupal shop yeah. in Burma. Yeah, in Rangoon or Yangon. Wow, okay. And how's the Drupal market in Burma? Yeah, it's, it's growing, it's growing. Actually, when I arrived there two and a half years ago, most of the websites were on uh, Joomla and some of them also on WordPress. But now I would say about 80% of the new sites coming out in Burma or developed in Burma are actually running on Drupal. And is that all you? No, no, that's not all me. That's actually also most of the other agencies uh, started now to work with Drupal as well. Wow. Uh, some of them already uh, did uh, some Drupal work before, but it was very limited. But now it seems nearly all of the agencies are going for Drupal as well. Hmm. So how do the... Do we still say Burmese? Burmese, yeah. Okay. So how do the Burmese deal with um, Drupal and, and how much of a translation is there and, and how is it how's it become so popular? Um, I think one of the reasons why it became so popular is that uh, so many of the sites there got hacked. So a lot of the, let's say, bigger newspapers or whatever got hacked at least once a month. They were running on Joomla before. So uh, they heard, yeah, Drupal is supposed to be safer and secure more secure and supports also multilingual better. So I think that was were the main reasons why they moved to Drupal, even though it doesn't necessarily, just because you're using Drupal doesn't mean your site doesn't get hacked. But it's probably, it's less likely that it uh -huh. gets hacked, even though you have not the full skill set of uh, assessing the security. So issues. do they speak English enough to read the documentation and learn it themselves? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially reading and writing is, is, uh, is quite okay. Yeah? Um, sometimes, yeah, speaking is a bit more difficult because they are not so used to, to speak in, in English. It's fascinating and utterly, I mean, wonderful to discover that there are entire communities of people doing things with Drupal that, that we just didn't even know about. Yeah. And yet, <laughs> right, everybody's empowered by this. Mm -hmm. the, yeah. we, we, we've created something that lets publishers in, in Myanmar uh, create community do their, bring, bring their message across, right? Yeah. And help NGOs and what have you. Exactly. Yeah. Um, given that you've been on the front lines in some ways of, of, of helping people and working in NGOs and using Drupal in, in an emerging market, can you talk about how something abstract like code is making a positive difference in, in, the, in the real world? Mm, yeah, like uh, technology uh, can help uh, secret society a lot, especially uh, in being able to, to get a message across. Uh, we have seen that in many uh, cases already in the past uh, that 
even Facebook or whatever can help a lot in spreading a message. Uh, uh, and that's going to be easier in the future in, in Myanmar, or is becoming already much easier, um, because now the country has been opening up and, uh, uh, like, internet is more affordable and people have now a mobile access and so on. So um, this kind of technology can help people to get their message across. And also some people can make a living out of that. Mm. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for talking with me. And speaking of making a living, I want you to do a shameless plug for M Spiral Creative Media. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, M Spiral Creative Media is a Drupal shop uh, based in Yangon. Uh, have a look at our website at mspiral.com to check out what kind of stuff we have been doing. Tom, congratulations and thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank it's you. so <laughs> interesting. Um, and everyone out there, come to Drupal of Community Events because you never, ever know what kind of interesting people you're going to meet. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Tom. <laughs> the German speaking Italian who lives in Burma. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there is. I haven't met any other Sastrolian yet, but there are quite a few Italians and quite a few Germans there. Uh